this is how I was able to spot a tree that ran for while we should three R in three minutes. Just in three minutes. I know most of you once you hear um something like this, you'll be tempted to go to the lower time frame like the one minute and even the seconds time frame. You'll be tempted to go and look for probably patterns you've seen in videos like this. You go to the lower time frame and start looking for patterns like that in order to replicate it and expect the type of result you've seen in videos like this. But that is not how it is done. In this video, I want to break it down what I was looking for and how I am able to spot these lower time frame trades. If you've been following me for some time now, you will know that most of my entries are done on the one minute time frame, five minutes time frame. In fact, about 80 to 90% of my entries are done on these lower time frames. But I spend most of my time on the higher time frame, like the weekly time frame, the daily time frame. And this is what makes the framework for what you see on the lower time frame. All right. For this particular trade, what I was looking at were these price points. These were basically the things I was looking at. As you can see, we have this week here, this long one and the middle here, the highest, the highest high on this time frame. We have the midpoint here. I noted that um, this one you are seeing, this um, rectangle you are seeing is coming from the daily time frame. We'll look into that once we get there. And this one, the line you are seeing here, that's the midpoint of the week here. The longest one here, that's the midpoint there. And as you can see, we I have this fair value gap marked up like this. This line, this gray line you, we have here, I got that from the monthly time frame. Yes, I got that from the monthly time frame. And you probably know what that is already. This is an other block. It's an area where price can react to. It's possible for price to trade to the open of the other block here and react from it. It's possible to come to the midpoint. But currently, it's reacting from the midpoint of the week here. So that's where the reference point came from. That's where this line came from. So as at the time price was around this area, I think I shared with a friend on Instagram that price is likely to draw down to this fair value gap here. I marked it and that I would like to see the reaction price will give me after coming into this fair value gap. But currently, I'll be looking for higher prices. I'll be looking for price to reject from this fair value gap and start trading to the upside because I have an area of interest to the upside here that price has not met. So I would like to see price come for this 187.431. So that was the idea I shared and it's amazing to see how price is reacting from the fair value gap. So I'll watch to see if it is able to overcome the consequent encroachment of this of this week here. I moved to the daily time frame and I saw this huge order block. That was what drew my attention here. And another thing that drew my attention was this inversion fair value gap, this fair value gap here, this old one here. Price traded through as at this point where price was up here. I was expecting it to use it as a kind of support to take price higher. But unfortunately, we saw price traded lower and closed below it. So I'll, I'll be, I'll, I am expecting, I'm still watching to see if we are able to trade above it or if we are going to use it as a kind of resistance to take price. Um, we know again, but what I'm expecting in the long run, I'm watching to see if we are able to take it higher and use it as a kind of support to meet our higher time frame objective. In a short run, we have this buy side liquidity here. That's on the daily time frame. We have this as buy side liquidity. So we can see the weight is here. So that's what I'm looking for. But as it is now, 
the framework is not in alignment with what I have. But from the higher time thing, like from the monthly time thing, you saw what we had there already. We saw where price is reacting from. That is from this gray line here. We know what that is already. I want to see if it's able to overcome this hindrance here, this other block here, and then we'll be looking for this buy side. So that was what I was looking out for. So I went a little bit crazy today, like I went detailed because I I marked this this week here because I told you this this candle is another block and this is a potential area where it can react from and start trading lower. So I marked all these points. I was able to spot that this daily candle, this current day candle traded lower and it's kind of finding support from the consequent encroachment of the week we marked from the weekly time frame here. Like it traded to it and rejected from it. So I was watching to see how price trades into this into this other block and to watch how it trade when it comes to these various price points which I use this um FIB to mark and I was watching to see whether it will be able to trade into the inversion fair value gap here and see how it treats when it gets into it. I went to the one hour time frame. I didn't do anything on the four hour time frame. I went to the one hour time frame. And during the London session, we had this. That's the two o'clock New York time there. That's the London session. So the narrative on the one hour time frame, we can see that price took our sell side liquidity here, traded down. You know, you know where we got this grid line from. That's from the monthly time frame. We saw the reaction here. And then traded up into this fair value gap, reacted from it, came to the consequent encroachment of the weekly time frame, which we mapped. And we can see the reaction of price from it and started trading above. So this fair value gap, I marked it. And one thing that drew my attention was how price was able to close above it again. So this became an inversion fair value gap for me. And we're already in the London session. So it's a nice setup. And if you watch closely, we have this little fair value gap in the inversion fair value gap there. So we can see it there. And price during the London session, it traded into it. Once we get to the lower time frame now, let me put um, the line here so that we'll be, able, we'll be able to demarcate that on the lower time frame. So, once we get to the lower time frame, you see that all these things make sense. We make a lot of sense. So, we have this as a buy side on this time frame. So, buy side liquidity, that's where it lies there. So, to the 15 minute time frame now. Here is what we have, not totally different from what we have on, on the one hour time frame. So this is the London session. Let's move to the five minutes. Here we are on the five minutes. Here we are. Here we are. Here is it. We have the sell side liquidity here. We saw how price was able to trade higher, 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 hit the week of the other block here, reacted from it, took our sell side liquidity, and then went higher and traded into the midpoint of the week that we noted on the daily time frame, the other block. You can rewind the video back if you if you're already lost. So the other block it hit it here. And then we, we are getting this reaction from here, from it, and traded lower again. I'm still watching price. Although I have this place as my buy side already, but I have this as my buy side already, but I'm still watching price to see how it reacts 
to these various price points. If it's going for this buy side, then it should use these areas, this price of marked with the FIB on the lower time frame. It should use it as a kind of support to take price to the buy side liquidity here. So coming to this place, we have a lot of consolidation around here. And then we saw this impulsive move to the upside and it was able to close above it. It was able to close above above the consequent encroachment of the week here. That is the other block from the daily time frame. And that picked my interest. So this now automatically becomes an other block I'll be looking out for as an entry. And immediately I saw this, I knew that once this price opens now and trades lower, the moment it touches this other block, or if it, the moment it touches this other block, it's a buy for me. Or if it's able to touch the consequent encroachment of the week here, that's the daily other blocks week here, it's a buy for me. So that was what I was watching out for. And immediately I entered that buy, I wouldn't like to see here this price point. I wouldn't like price to respect it. I just want to see it rip through. I don't want to see any respect of that price point. I want price to trade through it and then trade into the buy side liquidity here. And as you can see on the one we need, here is where the breaker comes in. Here is where the breaker comes in now. The breaker for the entry, which is what, um, which is the major thing you will see whenever I post my entry. Here is where it comes in. Okay, let's take all this out now. Now look at it. Look at how price trade price was around this area just see the middle of the hairline there that's what i'll be making reference to price was around this area it traded lower took out sell side liquidity here that's interesting right and then was able to trade from the sell side liquidity and was able to take this high and was able to close above it that was when the other block on the five minutes formed. So immediately coming to the one minute, I'm seeing this breaker. This last up close candle. I'm seeing it. And if I want to be very careful, I'll just use the two of 12 these candles there. Those up close candles here, that is one, two. I'll just use the two of them there, which is what I'm using now. So, I'll bring, once price trades into it, I'll take that as a buy and put my stop loss just below the breaker. And then aim for the buy side liquidity. I'll aim for the buy side liquidity here. And now it's even 1 ratio 4 and not 1 ratio 3. One ratio four, you can see. So I'm not picking this breaker on its own. I'm not just coming to the one minute and start looking for breaker to pick at then trade. You see the narrative I followed from the weekly time frame down to the one minute time frame. And this is how you should be looking at price. Price is very fractal. Know where it's likely to go or the higher time frame and come and replicate that on the lower time frame and you see that the number of your losing trade will reduce drastically and the number of your winning trade will increase and once you are able to journal this you're able to keep track records of this um you get you get used to it your eyes will get used to it and the level of your confidence will be built up if you like the video please do well to smash that like button and if you're not yet subscribed and you like videos like this, please do well to hit the subscribe up there. And tell us what you think about the video in the comment section below. God bless you. Cheers.